I'm Charlotte Jones. I'm Kim Ligon. And welcome to another episode of The Soul of the Matter. She's older, so she doesn't do the 
you know, social media, so I said, well, I'll have my cousin hook you up to look. But yeah, so she's excited for you too. <laughs> Amen. So this is awesome. We're going to continue on with praise and worship with uh, Sister Dan.
Oh! 
like scars on my eyes so I continue to just let that be a reason. So that's when God had to start healing me from the inside. He had to start telling me that I created you to be you. And I'm a, I'm a videographer, so I've been, I mean, I do more than just videography. I direct all that stuff. And I just recently changed the name of my business to The Potter's Creation. And everybody asks, why did you change it to The Potter's Creation? And it's because I've always loved you are the potter on the clay. Um, and I always knew my divine purpose for people were to broke, to fix the broken, all right, to show the broken, to, to always be able to see, I'm, I've always been a seer. So with God being the potter and I'm the clay, I'm literally only God's vessel to show them who they are in God. And any yeah. Second Corinthians 5 and 17. And it's therefore, if anyone in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone and the new is here. So I had to remember that who I was can always be there, but that's not who I am in Christ. That is just my story. That is just my story. And um, I said I was going to say a testimony, but I guess it's not because it's not coming. But the, the thing that God gave me, and this is what I'm probably going to close with because I told you Jesus wept. <laughs> what God gave me is how many of you guys seen the first space jam? The, the, the good one? No? Space jam. Space jam. You saw the first space jam, right? So there's a scene in the first space jam where he, Michael Jordan, is in the room and their team is losing. And he has, he's, he's trying to get them to get up. Like, you guys, I didn't come down here to lose. I need you to get up. Nobody's in there. Everybody's in there saying, we losing. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, okay. And he's giving this good, good speech, and, and there goes Bug Bunny back there filling a water bottle. And the water bottle, he writes on it, Michael's secret stuff. So he lets Michael finish that speech, and he goes, I know you're finished, but can I give you this? And he's, he takes a sip and goes, You've been holding out on us. You've given us the secret stuff. So it's kind of like a placebo. Now everybody's drinking that water and they're ready to go and they're ready to win. They go out there and they win, right? But this is what God gave me, okay? Why can't we change Michael's secret stuff to, I got my own. To God's healing grace. Yes. So if we can always learn that if I just have God's healing grace, I would be better. I'm going to do better. I'm going to hear from the inside. I'm going to help him. I'm going to help him. I'm going to pray for him. Anytime I'm feeling down, I'm feeling depressed, I'm feeling gone, I'm going to grab my bottle of God's healing grace and know that I'm saved, know that I'm prosperous, know that I am with you. Just know that God has always been by your side. He has never left you. He has never leaving you. Just like I said in, in the podcast, I heard that my life was surgery. Um, if you don't know, I've been under a lot of surgeries. I've died a couple times, let's just say that. So I'm always in the hospital. And I say that you're in the surgery room. When you are healing, you have to learn that it's only you, God, and the angels at that time. Yeah. You know you want everybody in that room, but when you're having surgery, do they let your family in there? No. Do they let your friends in there? No, it is the surgeon and it is the nurses and it is you. Right. So in that surgery room with God, it is you on the table. It is God as your surgeon and it's the angels in there opening you up. It is you. So if you have any time, you can you are layer by layer by layer. They don't just cut and you are open. You have to cut the skin. You have to cut the muscles. You have to cut everything to get to where God wants you. together and then we need to remember healing that is when family and friends come back during healing you know we have the family who say oh do this do this do this well the doctor said do this do this do this you are correct what did God tell me you are only here to help me heal through this process but you are not my healer God is my healer we're going to get is from God himself, the surgeon himself, the one who healed you. And then that is my speech. So I want y'all to remember that when y'all feeling down and y'all don't know what
to do. Grab a hold of God's healing grace. Just sing. Save for 
Jesus. And the title didn't mean nothing to me. And so I ended up, and I left the church. And my husband was at the church now. He's a deacon. And I ended up leaving the church. Not that I was right. Because I was out of order. And I had to apologize. But because I had to get somewhere. And I went to God. And I said, God, this thing, what is going on with me? And he said, you're, you're bitter. And he said, he said, because, I said, well, why am I bitter? He said, because you have not forgave. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, I said, well, I said I forgave. He said, with your mouth. He said, but with your heart, which I know, you still harbor resentment toward your husband and toward that man that violated you. So he said, I need you to come with me. Because see, if you don't address it, God ain't gonna just pour itself on you. And I had to address it, and I wanted it, and I desired it. And I'm in this church, and people looking at me, and, and I'm, 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 I'm supposed to be a certain way, but I'm not an actress. I didn't grow up into an actress family. I didn't know how to act. I didn't come from that church. I came from street life. And it kept bothering me, and I kept messing up. 
with the test. And somebody kept coming with me, and my mouth would say something, and the test, I got wrong. Now, this, I thought, took for a little while, but it took, it took years. <laughs> it took some years. Because I think I met you in 2015, 2016. I, I, I went through my journal. And uh, uh, it was just, it was, it was so devastating for me to be in this state and preach the word of God. And I could pray for someone else. But when I prayed for myself, God said, your prayers are hindered. Because of your bitterness. Because of your unwillingness to forgive. Because of that hate you harbor in your heart toward that person who, by the way, died. Wow. Mm. Mm. So, he, so the Holy Spirit said, start writing. So I start writing. I said, what I'm writing? He said, write each one of them. Mm. And I start writing letters. I start writing a letter to the man that offended me. I wrote a letter to my mama. I wrote a letter to my husband. I wrote a letter to myself, a young girl. I got, I, I started writing letters, and each day I added something new. Each week I added something new. Every month I added something new. I mean, my, my husband's, my husband's letter was like ten pages long, and 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 the offender's letter was twenty pages. But I had God got me through that. And the more I look back over it, and I begin to read it, and I begin to, I begin to. Minister to myself through him yeah. and to my own self. Yeah. To my own self. I, 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 I said, God took me through that to get me yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. And I begin to thank God yeah. because I'm alive. Yeah. Regardless of what I look like, regardless of what I've been through, regardless of what happened to me in my life, regardless of what was taken from me, God said, so me fit. To tell his testimony. And then the, when, I, when I finished with him, I said, well, I don't want to keep these letters all around. God said, now burn them. Because it's over. He said, burn them. Because it's over. And I knew that it was over. Because when I got in a loud discussion, you know what a loud discussion is with your husband. I got in a loud discussion. I didn't bring it up no more. I didn't tell him off. I didn't cuss him out. I didn't say the things that we, I, there was nothing in my heart to say, but we we could communicate. Now we 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 the kind of communicators that we loud anyway, but we could communicate. And God delivered me from unforgiveness because I went to Him. I desired Him. I, 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 one thing He 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 showed me is I can't do nothing if you don't open the door and open your mouth. Because I desired that deliverance. I wanted to be set free. I was in a dark place. And sometimes it can be a mental thing. And the church is now, it's just now getting that there is a mental thing going on. Because before you couldn't talk about having depression or, or you're having a nervous breakdown. But they just say, girl, you're tripping and you're crazy. Go sit down. But now, every leader, I, I just urge every leader, when someone comes to you and say they hurt or they're going through, don't shove them off. Don't tell them to get over it because right. then you trip it as a minister. So I say this to encourage that, that God is healed here to deliver and heal them today. To deliver the hearts of his women and men. And his desire is that we live an abundant life. Yes. That we live free in him. Yes. That, that, that we don't be held back by religion. Yes. Amen. Yes. So I, I want to end this with just releasing this prayer of, of Father God. Yes. Father God, yes. we receive your healing on today. Yes. Help us to forgive what we can't forgive, Father God. Yes. Put us in the right direction, Father God. Stir us up, Father God. And Father God, turn us the way you desire us to be. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, position us so that we be in the right way, at the right time, on the right course. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
so much in there, I can't even try to recap all that. That was good. And I just want to encourage you, sister, yeah, there's people, that, there's more than just you in the church that have gone through the same thing. We can all dress up and look pretty on the outside and still have stuff going on on the inside. So thank you for being transparent. And our next speaker will talk about emotional healing, and that is Kimberly Van Lee. Lady. 
can't help each other, but God is yet above it all. Isn't that amazing? God is above all of that. Um, all right, let's keep going here. So I have three questions for you. You can answer them now or write down the questions and answer them later. Think about where you are. Who would you be with healthy emotions? Think about where you're struggling the most in your emotions. Who would you be healthy in that place where those, where those kind of emotions are more here and healthy? What would your relationships look like with healed emotions? Last, who could you serve better if your emotions were healed? I love how Mona brought out earlier God kind of arrested her and got her attention and asked her a question. You know, so, so much goes on in our lives that God has to tap us on our shoulder. Why? Because we're in our feelings, right? I had all this going on. I can't be thinking about that right now. I'm over. I can't do that right now. But I love how he arrests us with that. Here's what an emotion is. Emotions are reactions that human beings experience in response to events or situations. Emotions are here to help us relate. There's and nobody modeled that for you in your family. You go through cycles and cycles and cycles, and you just think, well, I'm mad, and that's part of my personality, and that's who I am, and that's, that's how you're supposed to act. I remember one day I was at work. I was young. I think I was in my 20s, maybe late 20s, and this older woman said to me, she's like, man, you're really sick. I was like, dang. <laughs> she said, you were really cynical. And I was at that time, but I thought that that's who I was. Mm -hmm. It takes God to break you out of the shell of who you, whether you grew up in your family of origin and who you thought you were to be. And he has to reintroduce you to yourself, not only in the area of emotions, but your true identity in Christ. And then you begin to emerge as a true you. But for me, my emotions, I identified a lot of who I was to the point where I had a very hard time in relationships, whether they were romantic or friendships, because I was always so guarded. I was in the fight or flight all the time. Why? Because things were happening to me in my family, and this is just how it's supposed to be, and how we were supposed to deal with it, and the things I saw my mother go through, and abuse, and divorce, and all of these crazy things. I'm, I'm on guard. Oh my God, what's next? What's happening next? And then, Lord have mercy, you add the church on top of that, and you got to put on a mask. I'm going to invite my sis, although I am from Peoria, so I'm right next to you. <laughs> so I learned about the dozens too. But at the end of the day, you just learn how to guard yourself so you can't be yourself. That's not the real you. So when I talk about um, three elements of emotion, um, the first element of your emotion. And this is, how, this is how we get healed, because we know the makeup of something. So hang in there with me. The first element of our emotions is subjective. It's based on or influenced by our personal feelings. So if it's subjective, it's personal. It's how I deal with things. For example, with anger, your own experience might range from mild annoyance to blinding rage. For example, with me, I cry when I get mad when people think I'm sad, but I'm like, and you can't feel mixed emotions. That's a thing. You can be sad and happy. For example, like when you have a baby, and reminding of my daughter, uh, who just had, you know, my two grandsons, and while she was ecstatic, uh, she was also like, yeah, this is for the birds. Um, so these emotions might, might occur simultaneously, or you might feel them one after the other. Personal. The second part of an emotion is a physiological response. It's physical. How you feel. Sweaty palms. Your heart is racing. That, that's the physiological response of it. Um, many of the physiological responses you experience during an emotion, sweaty palms, racing heartbeat, are regulated by the sympathetic nervous system, um, which is a branch of uh, our autonomic nervous system. So again, that fight or flight. I'm in fight or flight. And then the last element of our emotion is our behavioral response. This is what we know most about emotions. How I express myself when that emotion comes up. 
If I'm happy, a smile comes on my face. If I'm angry, for me, I cry. If, you know, you're frustrated, you know, you may pace or walk around or whatever it is, that's your behavioral response. I brought all of that up for us to be able to check ourselves when these things are happening to us. Okay, what's happening to me right now? And for me, I don't know about you, because I didn't learn this and because it wasn't modeled for me, I just went through like, like, well, that that's how it is. And if I hurt somebody along the way, then I just hurt somebody along the way. Or if they hurt me, that's just who they were. But there's a breakdown, and guess what? We get to stop and check in with ourselves yeah. and say, hey, wait a minute. What's going on with you, girl? What, what, what's happening with you right now? Why are you feeling like that? And bring awareness to what you're feeling in the moment. One of the things that God taught me after my divorce was, since you need to learn how to manage your moments. Managing the day is great. Manage the moment that you're in right now. That's how you're going to blossom when you're doing it. So those are the elements of emotion. I want to talk a little bit about Jesus. Is that all right? Yes. In John 11 and 33, well then, call those things that be not as though they were. Amen. I am you. Amen. I am well. Yeah. I am good. Yeah. Come on, glory to God.
high on emotions causes all these things, health issues, poor, de poor decisions due to our trauma lens, unhealthy relationships, poor communication. We say things we don't mean, we lie, we become passive aggressive. We lose esteem and self-worth. We're not authentic. We're not at peace with ourselves. Um, we're always on guard. We're hyper vigilant. Vigilant. That was me. What's next? What I gotta do next? How perfect do I gotta be? I don't, I don't have to be perfect. We don't have to be perfect. We should be making progress. But we don't have to be perfect. And the perfection that God wants from us, He does the work in us. He takes the lead in that. Um, we put more energy into how we express our emotions versus getting to the root of our trauma. We become married to dysfunction. Mm. Mm. We just marry it. We defend the threats that belong in the past. So we hold on to things. I say it like this. We hold on to our pet rattlesnakes. And we don't think that it's going to bite us, but it will. All right. Here's a scripture we heard uh, earlier today. Uh, when I was leaving that 19-year marriage, as most of us do, I was like, why is this happening to me? And God said to me so clearly in my front yard, you didn't watch over your heart. He, he said to me, your heart is like a swinging door. Anything comes in and anything goes out. You didn't guard your heart. And the key thing about that is I didn't know myself well enough to do that. I, didn't, I, I was living, I had a husband, I had kids, I was in ministry. I didn't take the time to get to know who I was, which many of us did. So he said to me, watch over your heart with all diligence. From it flows the springs of life. This word, watch or keep, means to guard, reserve that which is new and worth keeping. That word diligence comes from a Greek word meaning prison or jail. You have to have the key to unlock the prison door. So you have to hold that tightly, what goes in and what goes out. And I really feel the presence of God on that. Be yeah. careful who you give the keys of your heart to. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta be careful with that. Be careful with that. Um, it also means a place of confinement. Your heart, of course, means your inner man, your mind, your will, your seat of appetite, your emotions, and your courage. Life means alive, green, flowing, fresh, reviving of springtime. So what that said to me when I was studying this is it should be pure. It should be a pure spring. You know, when it flows out, for me, when I was younger, when I was little, all this gunk was coming out. Right? And I was trying to mix that with relationships and be married. I often say now, and I get tickled, I was unpacking all that baggage mm -hmm. in my marriage. Right? And some people can do it successfully. So I'm not getting down on that. But it turns out I couldn't do it. I need to unpack my baggage so that I can be free. Yeah. So now that I can see me, my husband. <laughs> successfully be in community. I had a hard time. I had maybe two friends, but I had a hard time embracing men or women. Just being in community because I was all, I had all this unhealed stuff going on. Right? So again, we have to have on this mask. Alright. Two more. We're out here. So here's some things, just some tips that I want to leave. As you are, maybe you already healed, maybe you want to share this with somebody, maybe you are healing in your emotions. Manage your moments. Take a minute to stop if you get upset. Breathe. Bring awareness to the emotion. What am I upset about? What's, what's going on here? I was upset about something I was working from home. I couldn't figure out why I was so frustrated. It was a call that I took two calls ago, but it, I was just all over my place. And I had to stop. I had to bring awareness to that and say, oh, okay, I was upset about that. Holy Spirit, can you help me to move through that? Right? Can you help me to move through that so that I don't take it out on the next person? Because you will. Yeah. You will take it out on the next person you talk to. 
So ask him to help you manage your moments. Of course, prayer, submitting your mind, your will, and your emotions to the word of God. Every day I pray, Father, I apply the blood of Jesus to my mind, my will, and my emotions. So whatever comes my way, let it pass through the blood, because I still believe in the blood. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Galatians 5, align your emotions with the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. Right? So there should be a divine exchange in prayer. Right? So if I'm feeling like this, and, and God can handle whatever you want to put on his plate, he can handle it. Yeah. Whoever you're upset with, whoever you're mad with, whatever it is, he can handle it. Yeah. 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 That's it. Give it to him when you write it or journal it, and then ask him to align your emotions with the fruit of the Spirit. Take inventory of the situation, and like I said earlier, what is it worth to you to carry it for more than 90 seconds? Be intentional about resolving the issue and being solution-oriented. Like Jesus, if it brings you to righteous indignation, then something good will come of it and justice will be served. Right. I want to remind you to resist the urge to doing a bunch of busy work and deal with your emotions. Journaling, and you can keep it, or like my sis did, you can set it on fire. Do something <laughs> physical, right? It really helps. If you're upset, if you're having trouble with your emotions, get up and move. Go take a walk. Get go. I have all these trees in the back of my house. I can go out there and I can breathe and I can talk to God. All right, the next thing that's going to help us heal our emotions is emotional intelligence. Here's some signs that you will be able to tell that, okay, I, I'm emotionally intelligent in that area, or I need to work on some of these things. And awareness of personal strengths and limitations, like, that's too much for me, I can't handle that right now, right? So even on my way over here, um, my dad passed. And all of this reminds me of him. All of it. The hospital right where, I don't know where we are, over yonder, the one up there. I was like, whew, okay. I'll deal with that on the way home, right? But it just brought up the memory of that. So understand your limitations. Self-confidence and self-acceptance. The ability to let go of mistakes. Can you let go of a mistake or do you condemn yourself for two or three days? An ability to accept and embrace change, a strong sense of curiosity, particularly about yourself, other people, feelings of empathy and concern for others, or is it just all about you? Showing sensitivity to the feelings of other people, accepting responsibility for mistakes, and the ability to manage your emotions in difficult situations. Last, I hope that from today we learn better how to know and understand our we heal our trauma and our emotional abuse. I went through years of emotional abuse, gaslighting, um, manipulation, control, all oh, narcissism, all, oh, and I'm not just throwing that word out there. I didn't have any language for what I was going through. And it was all under the guise of just pray about it. Mm -hmm. Emotional abuse, 
And as I, as I started coming out of that emotional abuse, I want to say this. Healing is not linear. It's not one straight line. You're going to go up, down, up, down. You're going to have some good days. You're going to have some bad days. You're going to be like, man, I thought that. I was over that. And God is like, no, come back in. <laughs> but that's okay because he knows how to handle you, right? So heal the trauma, heal the emotional abuse. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Heal that trauma, even from childhood. Whatever you need to, whoo, glory to God, whatever you need to go back and get, get it. Write the letter, make the call, forgive, and move forward so you can move forward. Right? Understand your identity in Christ. God gave me one instruction after I came out of that marriage. He said, I want you to teach who you are because as you teach, the transformation is going to take place. So I begin to dig in the word about who I was again, right? I knew it at some level, right? And I ministered to many, 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 many people. Seen them, like my sister healed, delivered, and set free. But I was broken, right? So God had to reteach me who I was in Christ again. Learn your identity in Christ and confess it. Confess it, confess it. And align your character with the word of God. And then work on keeping a very high emotional EQ, which is your emotional quotient, how smart you are emotionally. They say that it's even more important nowadays, particularly after the pandemic, your emotional quotient versus your IQ. So you should be able to look at a person and say, man, something's going on with her. I'm not even tapping into discernment or the discerning of spirits, but I should be able to look you in the eye said, wow, she's doing great today. I really like her. She's awesome, right? Or oh, man, something's going on with my sister, right? But we also, too, as a body of Christ, have to get back to a place, or maybe get to a place for the very first time where the walls are down because we are healed, right? I think somebody said that earlier. God is getting us to a place in this hour where he wants us healed and whole, right? Daughter, thy faith has made me whole so that I can embrace my sister, right? And she doesn't have to be afraid of me, right? She doesn't have to be afraid of me. And I don't have to be afraid of her because why the wall is down. And we know how to set boundaries. We say, I, I can do that. I can stay in the house all day on Saturday, right? And so one of my friends calls and says, hey, come on out the house, sis. And I can either say, yes, I can do that, or no, I'm not feeling like it today. But the person on the other end of the phone needs to know me well enough to know that that has nothing to do with me. That's who she is, right? So all of this cattiness and uh, gossip and slander and talk behind the back and what's up with her and all of that, just watch that. Right. the new creation in Christ Jesus. And then as we do that, the flow of the body of Christ will shift and move, shift and move, like a well-oiled machine. And people will look at, it, look at us and say, I know them by their love. I know them by their love. I know them by their service. Because they can have, they can have relationships. They can have relationships. They can have friendships. I'm not saying you gotta be friends with everybody in, in your church or in, yeah. even in the body of Christ. I'm saying. But we should be able to come mm -hmm. to a point in our emotions where we don't get upset if somebody says something to us or uh, mentions something to us. And here's the last thing: we should be able to handle conflict in the body of Christ. Yes, amen, amen. We should be able to handle conflict. Uh, I see that a lot. That we don't know how to handle conflict, and it doesn't mean that the person doesn't like you. You know, necessarily they're trying to rebuke you or bring you down. It's a problem. There's a problem. There's a problem that needs to be solved. And God wants us to be problem solvers. And I think part of that starts with walking in healed emotions and emotional, the emotional quality of our lives. Thank you for having me.
Thank you. 